Robin Hood review by Wake Up. Okay then. Let me just say, when I was a kid, I was a massive fan of a show called Maid Marian and Her Merry Men. It showed Tony Robinson, who basically wrote and um, starred in this, and he most famously he's known for Baldrick and Blackadder. And they basically showed Maid Marian and, Mary, and Her Merry Men. Basically, Marian was the Robin Hood type figure, whereas Robin was the guy who stayed at home and made suits. Okay. Now, with that in mind, and also bear this in mind as well, I went to Nottingham Forest when I was about eight years old, and I dressed up as Robin Hood, and I idolised this guy from my childhood. And I remember having sword fights and not wanting to actually leave. I wanted, to, I wanted to live in that world. Now, with that said, let me talk about the Robin Hood movie that's just come out with Ridley Scott. What I liked about it, it was a different take on a well-known tale um, the English accents were done extremely well, like really, really well done. Like Russell Crowe, I gotta give this guy props. I mean, the thing with the Kevin Cosner film back in the day, um, was it Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves? Is Kevin Cosner didn't even do, bother doing an English accent, or he tried and he failed miserably, and it really got to me. Um, with that said, I'll also go in about. Um, let me talk quickly about how when I said it was a different take on a well-known tale. Um, Robin is a really well-known story. Like, everyone knows it. And the thing with Ridley Scott is he's an actual director. He likes telling a different type of story. And so how do we? How does he tell it? By going back. By telling a prequel, which I was well up for. I was really... I really enjoyed watching that. How Robin got to Sherwood Forest and what have you. The cinematography, as always, with all of Scott's films, was spotless. I mean, it was, it was jaw-dropping. And I think that this was actually filmed in England. It really paid off. Thank, uh, which is my next point, actually. Thank God they did it in England. I mean, it, it really does show. I mean, you're spotting all the English um, landmarks, and they're not done overly dramatically. Like, the White Horse, just it made me chuckle, because that is where they would be. You know, that that is Nottingham's not that too far away from there. Um, I really enjoyed the thing with the Blind Earl, and I didn't see that. You know, I think you call him an Earl. The Blind, um, the, basically like the King of Nottingham, basically, type, like the Earl or Duke or what have you. And I didn't see what was coming with that guy in that storyline. I'm sorry that was a really bad poem, but I couldn't help myself. I couldn't resist. Um, Little John, my God, kudos to this guy. I mean, his fight scenes were amazing. Like, he was using his entire body as a weapon, and it was really bloody entertaining just to see what he would do. He was leaping off horses. He had this giant hammer. I mean, I was there. Every swing at every dirty Frenchman, I was with him. I wanted to be doing that. Um, a very nice touch as well, um, introducing the Robin of Loxley integration into the story and having actually Robin Hood not as an earl or a duke or what have you but actually as like a commoner, a common soldier, a common archer and I really I really enjoyed the play on that like compared to like the other Robin Hood Prince of Thieves with Kevin Cosner where actually he was the um, Robin of Loxley where he felt compelled to do it. I found actually it says a lot more if it's a common man. Um, what else have we got? Oh the thing with all really Scott's films is they're his very historically accurate. Um, like all the weaponry was there at the time, all the chain mail, all the armor, all the flags. I mean, it was it had a really authenticity feel with it. It was like watching the History Channel. The story was extremely solid. There was a real chemistry between Russell Crowe and Kate Blanchett, as well as um, himself and his Merry Men. Like I, it got to the point where I actually wanted to be one of the Merry Men because the the chemistry was actually it was real. It was genuine. You felt that these guys had a had a bond, you know. It seemed like they were a proper coordinated team and that they'd been through fucking hell at Jerusalem. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to try and keep this censored because my last from my other review was that that's a fully explicit one. Um, I got the Russell Crowe Robin Hood thing I wanted. Like Russell Crowe is Robin Hood. Costner, Kevin Costner, mate, go away, go home, just go. Because, I mean, this one scene epitomizes my dream of Robin Hood where you've got the um, cart coming along which is by the church which is very corrupt and they're taking all the seeds to York even though they know that Nottingham's starving and then you've got him Robin Hood sat in the middle of this um, road with the hood over him saying I'll let you go if you answer a riddle we are the hood and then he turns around and is like drop your weapons and then you see all the merry men come out and you get that that scene was how I've always envisioned it and it, just, it was just it was like ecstasy it was ama it was just it was perfect. Not that you should do it. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> My dislikes in this film. Um, 
Every time Mark Strong, the bold antagonist of this film, was on the screen, I was extremely tense. I had no idea what this guy was going to do, and he had a really... I was scared of this guy. I, I could not read this guy at all, and it, it, it made me like almost have like a bloody heart attack every time this guy was on. Um, I, I disliked how much I, I hated the French. It really brought that out. And King John. I mean, I actually wanted to jump into this movie so I could slap King John over the face and just tell him to put himself together and stop being an ass. And the French, I mean, there's no better enemies to have. The only thing the French are good at is getting invaded. I'm sorry, but it's true. We all know it is. Um, <laughs> I just, I wanted to get into that film, pick up a sword, become one of Robin's merry men, and just take it to them, you know? Like, just bring it. Um, I was really disappointed when the movie actually ended, because I wanted to stay in that world. And the, the final scenes when Robin's just entering Sherwood Forest, and you see the guys up in the trees, and you got Maid Marian, and it was just... It was that was how that was it. I wanted that world. We never got that um, in the old Prince of Thieves, Robin Hood. Never got that at all. Which was it was just a, it was a joy to watch. Um, I would say though, um, Robin Hood had an epic feel to it, but I wouldn't go so far as to say it was an epic film. If that makes sense, I will say this in its favour though. Robin Hood, under any other director, it can never be. An epic film. Even with all the money in the world, with all the actors, with the best screenwriters, it will never be an epic film because the story is too well known. I mean, take a look at these other examples we've got here, and you'll be hard pressed to prove me wrong. When I say epic films, I mean stuff like Apocalypto, Gladiator, The Last Samurai, and even the director's version, the director's cut, not the not the chopped down, obliterated suit version of Kingdom Heaven. I mean, that film gets a lot of stick, but the four-hour version with the interlude is amazing. It's a joy to behold. You can actually bat Orlando Bloom, who, I know he's a pretty boy, but I mean, hey, Tom Cruise manages to pull that out in The Last Samurai, and I can get behind a character like that. I can get, I can, I, I can see where he's coming from, you know? And that's what I mean when I say epic films. We don't get them, and they're few and far between, which is actually going on to my next point. I would say Robin Hood is on par with Avatar, in that both films have epic moments in them. However, they still don't make the cut of epicness. Not that they, not that they were of Iron Man two quality, which was just pure laziness and bad suit making films. You know, like as Prodigy says, it's, you got to really wonder how much the creative side was actually in Iron Man compared to Robin Hood. I mean, really, Scott is just—he is the one of the top guys around, and it's just a shame that he's he. He can't have much longer around, you know, like he's probably got, what, another 20, maybe 30 years max of doing this. But anyway, um, I also have to say that epicness is kind of like lightning striking at a bottle. It rarely happens, which is why when it happens, it's it's epic. It's like got this magical quality to it. So overall, I give Robin Hood about an 8 out of 10. Um, the only thing I can see actually beating this is um, The Expendables. Fact. I mean, Inception, that's got a lot of hype, but I, I, can, I still, I don't like the idea of what's going on with Nolan. I don't like the fact that he's been given this blank check, and as um, Chosen One says, he's had all this praise over Dark Knight. Directors should not be given that much praise. It all goes to their head. We've seen it with Lucas. We've seen it with Lucas with his prequels. We've seen it with um, bloody Spielberg and that heap of trash, which was um, Indy 4. And I mean, Spielberg's got a lot of ground to make up, man, because I've lost an awful lot of respect for that guy. Right. Um, and I guess, I want to say bay out Spielberg in, but as, um, to quote Donnie Soprano, Spielberg's losing his bloody mind, man. So, I'm going to have to go with this new slogan of mine, which is, um, everybody else is expendable. Sly man, I'm counting on you. Um, the site, www.talkbackworld.net, for the real fan. That's Wake Up's review. Hope you've enjoyed it. Cheers for listening. Peace. <laughs>